Welcome to footballgameplan.com where football makes sense. I'm Tyler Merkovich and that's the Czar to Playbook, Emery Hunt, and we're bringing you an FCS preview on the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And let's start out with the East Division where the Jackson State Tigers hail, led by Rick Comagy. He was seven, they were seven and five last year. He's in his fourth year, ten returning on offense, seven on defense, and they're led by quarterback Trey Rutland, the lefty, and a great offensive line led by all league selections, Michael Harshaw and Eric Jones, and Darius Bolela and Luther Edwards, their tailbacks are back. Well, all five starters return at the offensive line, which is a talented group to begin with. And I, I, like, the, I like the fact that they're going to have that beef up front. Pass protection is going to be key. Run blocking is going to also be a factor. Those guys are, can do it both. And there's always talent at wide receiver for these guys. So they're going to have, you know, experience out there on the planks. I like the fact that Rutland is back. He was a, the leading rush last year with 490 yards. He has to improve. Seven touchdowns, ten interceptions. He has to pick it up in the passing game. On defense, they've been improving every year on their comedy. They've gone from five yards per game to three yards per game per carry. And the last couple of years, two and a half yards per carry. So it starts up front, but they lose defensive player of the year in the league. Marcella Speaks. Marcus James is going to try to fill his shoes, which will be big to fill. Marcel Young is their great defensive back, and their D-line is headed by Sam Washington and Neil Pogue II, and they're trying to keep that yards per carry down. There's a lot of talent on the defensive line led by Sam Washington, like you mentioned. Uh, Marcel Young is a real dynamite playmaker. The NFL scouts are salivating over his frame. He's 6'2", 205, a good hitter in the secondary with, with a lot of speed. It can cover sideline and sideline, so he's a big playmaker. There's a lot of good talent on defense. You want to look at 2.7 yards, 2.4 yards of carry, 77 yards total rushing a game, uh, 51% passing completion, which is huge in the SWAT because all they do is throw the ball around this conference, and they're able to stop people uh, you know, in their tracks. I like that defense of Jackson State. The Bulldogs of Alabama A&M are led by Anthony Jones, who's in his eighth year. Losing record last year at 5-7, and seven, but 9 return on offense, 8 on defense. Kevin Atkins will be their quarterback, but they are led by first-team all-league running back Ulysses Banks. And Anthony Green is also back. All-league performers Xavier Manuel and Charles Meade head the line, and their top receiver is back. He had over 1,200 yards, and Thomas Harris. Yeah, they have, they have pretty good running backs. I like those two running backs, Thomas Harris, really good receiver. 16.8 yards a catch, so he can get down the field. He's a real threat. You look at that offensive line, four starters, a solid group. And I like the quarterback, Kevin Atkins. He's a pretty good player. He's going to keep improving. He was a young guy last year, so I like that offense at Alabama a &M. They went from 32 points per game in 07 to actually 22 last year. Hopefully, with all that promise, they could build it back up to near the 30s. It'll help them out a lot. On defense, they improved against the pass last year, but they were abysmal versus the run. They went from 117 yards per game given up in 07 to 144 last season. And Jeremy Maddox, the defensive end, second team all league selection, had 24 stops in the opposite, on the other side of the line at scrimmage. Frank Kirst, defensive tackle, is going to try to keep that rushing uh, total down for the opposers. And cornerback Maurice Tomas. Well, they lose a lot of sacks on the defensive line. Uh, this season. A lot of guys graduated out, so they're going to lose a lot of production, a lot of sacks. Who's going to get to the quarterback? That's the biggest question. And that secondary is going to have to compensate. The secondary is the strength of the team. The secondary is going to have to compensate for the loss of all that talent on the defensive side of the ball. So they have a tall order this year. Alabama State Hornets are led by former Jacksonville Jaguars wide receiver Reggie Barlow. He's in his fourth year. Disappointing year last year, though. Three and eight. Eight returning on offense. Four on defense. Anthony Spate will battle Devin Dominguez for the starting job. All-league running back Ramon Trailer is back, and they have an experienced offensive line led by left tackle Aaron Wheeler, three seniors and two juniors on that O-line. Well, they, they, they're going to have to find some type of offensive production for that, that side of the ball. You look at 14 points a game, that won't cut it. You also look at 2.9 yards a carry, 88 yards rushing, as a group, uh, that's un that's ineffective. But I do like running back Ramon Taylor. He's a really good running back. A lot of quickness and shiftiness. He can make you miss in the phone booth. Real short area quickness. I like him a lot. Five offensive starters return on the offensive line. That is key. Best unit on the team. That's the best unit they have. So they're gonna have to build from that part, from that aspect on back and get some production. Their lead receiver Darius Mathis also returns. 
But on defense, their all league linebacker, Richard Johnson, is going to move to strong safety. But inside linebacker, Adrian Hardy, is still there. Donovan Massline is their shutdown corner. But they only return one starter on the defensive line, and that's N. Noel Alfonso. Well, first, that defense was on the field way too long last year. That was partly be, or mainly because the offense couldn't you know, convert third down, so they was on the field a lot. Hopefully, that offense can help out that defense this year. They were pretty good against the run, 3.5 yards a carry. It was holding their own a little bit. Um, but they do have some, some uh, strength in the secondary. Preston Hale is a, Dale is a real good guy. Uh, he had eight pass uh, breakups last season. Really good playmaker back there. And they do have some talent. You know, you mentioned Johnson. They also have a guy in Hardy, very good linebacker. So if they can get off the field, they'll be fine. Steve McNair's former school, the Braves of Alcorn State. Ernest Collins takes over the program. They were 2-10 and ten last season, 6 on offense, 8 on defense. Tim Buckley over 400 yards rushing as a quarterback. Devaris Pilcher. Their top running back is back, and Edward Johnson, their wide receiver, to go along with three starters in the offensive line return. Yeah, they have a lot of newbies that's going to be broken in at the wide receiver position, so they're going to have a lot of fresh faces. Fresh faces. The running back situation, the running backs have to get more production and more consistency. They have to continue to improve. Uh, and there were way too many turnovers last season. They were negative eight in the turnover dis differential. That has to improve. You can't win if you give the ball away. On the defensive side, their ends, Brandon Morris and Malcolm Taylor, combined for over 20 stops behind the line of scrimmage. They live in the backfield, these guys, and their secondary is led by second-team all-league selection, Roderick Williams, who had seven pass breakups. They have a young defense. I mean, you look at those two defensive tackles, I mean, those two defensive ends combined, nine sacks. That's a lot of talent on a defensive line, but they, they have a lot of young players on that defense, and that's going to hurt them a lot. 29 points, points a game, 61% completion percentage. They have to pick it up, but hopefully as they get older, they will continue to get better, So, but you have to bear with them. They are young. And I think you've heard of a player named Jerry Rice. He went to this school, Mississippi Valley State. They're the Delta Devils, and their coach was actually passing to Jerry Rice in college. Willie Todd, he's in his eighth year, disappointing 3-8 and eight last year. But Promise is in the fold for the Delta Devils. Eight on offense, back nine on defense. Paul Roberts will be their quarterback. Good thing is they get Joey Hargett back, who was injured last year. He's going to play tailback for them. Two returning starters on the offensive line. That's a massive offensive line. And Cam Russ, their wide receiver, he had six touchdowns last year. Well, they have a young offensive line, so they're going to have to hope that these guys get it together real quickly. But the good thing about it, they do have two really good veterans on that offensive line. Maybe, maybe they could teach those young guys how to play offensive line in the SWAC. Uh, you look at quarterback Paul Roberts, he's going to have to improve. 14 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, 56% pass completion percentage, 53%, I'm sorry. He's going to have to pick that up. And they use a lot of running backs and a lot of wide receivers, so they have a lot of depth at those positions. Those are the two strengths on that, on that offense, running back and wide receiver. They have a lot of players at those positions. Well, the downfall has been the defense, and the yards per carry given up have gone up the last three years. Defensive tackle Reginald Foster tried to change that. Roy Malone, their linebacker, had good stats last year, but they have a couple of good secondary players. And Michael Higgins, who had three tackles for loss, four pass breakups and three interceptions, and Keelan Kellebrew. Well, that secondary flies around the field. They have a lot of young playmakers in that secondary. I like that secondary. That's the best unit on that defense. You also want to look at they have to generate some type of pass rush to help slow down that, that uh, people passing on because the opponents completed 62% of the passes against them. They gave up 34 points a game. They also gave up 4.7 yards a carry. So overall, defensive line has to step up, play big, and you, you know you have to generate some type of pass rush. They have to get better on defense. Well, their completion percentage, their opponent's completion percentage have gone up the last three years, but that doesn't have to do with their pretty solid secondary. Exactly. You need to get to the quarterback. You can't give the quarterback all that time.